Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make an inclined side fan fold. Starting under the underarm, decide where you want the center of your fan fold to be, and then using a washable marker and a piece of kite string, mark out your pattern. Then you want to pleat along these lines, making those lines as straight as possible. And if you watch me, I will twist the shirt in front of me. It makes it a lot easier to make that line nice and straight. It never fails. No matter how much I sanitize my table, the dreaded turquoise always ends up on my blanks. How many of you have that happen to you? It's either that or fuchsia red. It just shows up out of nowhere all the time. For this project, I'm going to secure it by using the tiny little baby hair rubber bands that I picked up at Walmart. How many of you are new to tie-dyeing and new to ice dyeing and feel sort of intimidated by it? Don't be intimidated by it. I'd say out of all of the tie-dye processes, ice dyeing is probably the easiest and the most fun. You don't have to mix liquid dye and that's the first bonus right there, but ice dyeing is very forgiving. You can pleat up a shirt, throw some dye colors at it, and nine times out of 10, it's going to turn out looking great. So dive in head first, feet first, I guess. You don't wanna go in head first, you might bonk your noodle. But you're going to enjoy it, I promise you. For the rest of the shirt, you wanna continue working on your pleats. The pleats were becoming rather tall, so right here I'm beginning to introduce secondary pleats. So at the time this airs, it's about three days away from Christmas. How many of you are ready for Christmas and excited for it to happen? So I'm really sorry you guys, I didn't get a bunch of Christmas dyeing done. I had big plans, I have a whole list in my little book of you know, ideas, and I just, I really haven't been in the mood to make red and green tie-dye. Um, I've just been so busy, and it's just hard to keep up with everything, so I do apologize, but guess what? There's always next year. The length of the project started to become rather long, so I was thinking about bending it back on itself and just securing it, but I thought, nah, I'll just go for it. I have a long enough gutter and just take it all the way to the end. So you could stop right here with the rubber bands, but I had a few extra on the table. So all I'm doing now is I'm just picking up some of those loose tails and tucking them in with a little rubber band. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And I'm calling this shirt the flower shirt because all three colors are names of plants, flowers. Lavender is one of those dense, sort of sticky, powdery type powders, and it wants to bounce off this shirt for some reason. So I'm taking the spoon and I'm scooping it up from the gutter because I need the dye on the shirt. It's really not doing me much good in the gutter. Although, having a little bit down there will get up on the back side of it. So just keep working at it and force it in with the spoon if you have to. This shirt is going to a sweet little girl named Penelope and her mom calls her P. So I knew for sure that I wanted to add Sweet Pea into the color palette.
Grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. So even though this is going to be an incline ice die, I find that putting the ice on it while it's still laying flat a lot easier. If it's already at the incline, the ice just wants to roll downhill, knocking all the dye off as it rolls. So try this method and see if it works for you. I've got most of the ice on the project, so now I'm going to create the incline. And I'm using the dollar store basket to make it less steep. And I use my dye towel down at the end kind of as a stopper for the ice. There's several inches of gutter left and if I don't put something down there then I have to fill it all the way full with ice or else it just will roll downhill. So after the ice starts to melt it will all fuse together. I remove that towel so that it can flow out nice and smooth. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and checked it. And you could stop right here. There is good saturation, the back looks saturated, but when I peeked inside the folds, it didn't look quite saturated enough. I wanted it to be really heavily saturated, so I decided to just go ahead and repeat the process a second time. And I should mention, since this is the second round of dye, I'm not going near as heavy as I did the first time. It's been 48 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers. The reason why you're doing that is you want to get all that soda ash out so the darker colors do not redeposit on the lighter colors in the hot water cycle. Then you gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And that's the one good thing about ice dyeing is with all that ice pushing through it during the batching process, the rinse outs are really nice and easy. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes until that hot water cycle is clear. So I take a little cup, a clear cup, I scoop it up and I look at it and when the water is clear, I know I'm ready for my final uh, hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And I get both of those from Dharma Trading Company. Then I put the projects in the dryer and then I iron them and we come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our incline side fan fold after it's been washed and dried. And you really can't go wrong making this particular type of project. They usually always turn out great. Now I'm a little bit surprised at how much the sweet pea is a dark magenta color. It's really beautiful, but I wasn't expecting it to be so dark. I love the color splits, and you can really see where I added the additional pleats. Towards the back end there where you see like the V shape, those are the additional pleats. So what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel Leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.